So I was watching a Lego movie the other day, and I saw this really awesome explosion. Just really caught my eye, and kind of wanted to figure out in Houdini how to recreate that because it's just super dope. Anyway, so uh, here's an example of that explosion from the trailer on YouTube. See, there's an explosion in the background. There's one there. There's a couple in the background, and there's another one there. So it's kind of neat because it's um, obviously in Houdini, it's an explosion, um, but all the particles have been converted to small um, Lego bits. So uh, what I wanted to do is I want to recreate that myself, so in Houdini. So this is what I came up with, and this is what we're going to be recreating right now. Um, let's turn this on loop, just so you can see it a couple of times, it's like three seconds long. There we go. So as you can see, it's just a basic explosion. I didn't spend literally any time on the explosion itself. But um, what I want to be teaching you guys today is the uh, just the basic concept of converting a volume over to just Lego pieces like this. Uh, from there, you guys can take it wherever you want. Uh, you can play around with the explosion. Um, you can apply it to other things like water, um, any other kind of simulation, uh, fluids, um, smoke fire, uh, whatever. Um, and in part two of this um, tutorial, we're going to go over um, adding some attributes and some color. Um, so the color kind of changes from bright yellow over to orange to red to black eventually. So it'll look like an actual explosion. But for the first part here, we're just going to be going over how to create exactly this. So get started. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down control and I'm going to click on the box. Um, that'll create it right in the middle. Okay, and that this is going to be our fuel for the um, for the pyro. So I'm going to go to the pyro effects tab here. Um, with this selected, I'm just going to click on fireball because a fireball kind of cool for me. Then what it's going to do is it's going to do a quick little calculation. It's going to create a bounding box and you're going to see a smoke and if you play that you're going to see a basic explosion. Uh, the reason I chose fireball is because I really like that when it gets to about frame 30 you start seeing like here we go we've got this uh, cool mushroom cloud thing going on. I'm just going to stop the simulation here. So that's pretty much what I like, uh, and then I can just turn that into Lego, and it makes me happy. So uh, what I'll do from this point, we're not going to be playing around with any more simulations. So just to make everything easier on everybody, I'm going to go down here to the brain, and I'm going to turn the um, simulation off. So we don't have to wait for anything popping up. So uh, as you can see, we've got this auto dot network. It's been created. I'm not going to touch it at all, like I said earlier. It's going to go up here to another level. And um, I'm going to actually cache this thing out to disk. So um, I'm going to go into the pyro import, and then I'm going to create a ROP uh, output driver. And then I'm going to plug this bad boy into there. Uh, so for there, what I'm going to do is I'm going to specify what I want to do, um, and where, I wanna, where I want to create it. And this is where you're going to want to uh, save out your document because if you haven't done that already, you're not going to have a hip folder, so the output file is not going to know where to go. So we just do save as, and name it Lego example. This is the last time I did it, so I'm just going to hit accept. It's going to save it, yeah, yeah. Um, and now we've got all of our geo and hip name and all that stuff, so that, that'll make sense to Houdini now. So what I want to do is just going to open up the geo folder. Uh, as you can see, it's this is in the hip folder. Um, and it's empty. So what I want to do is uh, just for the purpose of this and this particular explosion, um, it doesn't really go past 75 frames. So I'm going to uh, change this time slider to 75 frames. And I'm also going to go here when I change the uh, frame range, I'm going to make sure to um, delete the channel there and change that to 75 as well. So we don't render too much. Um, so I'm going to grab this geo folder. Uh, and then when I hit uh, save to disk, it's going to copy right in there. And you're going to notice it's creating a bunch of files here. So we've got 36 already. Uh, once it hits 75, then it's complete. And we can just go ahead. 
All right, so the time slider is going blue, and uh, we can see there are 75 items in here. So I'm just going to go get rid of that bad boy. And uh, we're just going to go up one level. So I'm going to turn all the display flags off on everything here because I'm going to be creating a new geometry node, and we're going to work inside of here. Um, actually, what I'm going to do, I'm going to name this Convert to Lego. So this is what we're going to be working in. Uh, first thing we want to do is take this file node and we want to import our um, geometry that we just created. So here we go. You can see um, it says one file really, but uh, you can see one to 75. So that's all 75 listed. Uh, so I'll accept that, drag it in, and here we go. Uh, because the brain here is off, we know that that's just pulling simulation. So and we have an amazing explosion. Um, so we can start on legoizing it, I guess. So um, first thing I want to do now that we're here is um, I'm going to rename this just for uh, simplicity. I'm going to call it Explosion Import because that's where everything's starting. Um, now this is a volume right now. It's a cached out volume. Um, in order to do what we need to do, we need to convert it to points. So I'm going to create a points from volume, points from volume. And then we're going to we're going to have to transfer uh, some attributes. So we do attribute uh, from volume. And you'll see what we're doing here. So I'm going to pop that into here, into our points for volume. Um, you can see our point separation, everything that jitter scale would be right, really nice to play around with if you were not doing Lego. But Lego doesn't really, it lines up very nicely. So we're going to leave that at zero. Uh, point separation, this is something we don't want to mess, mess around with, but first we're going to need to bring in our geo and see what it looks like. So um, this is what the points look like when I convert it. Just be half a sec. And you're going to see nothing spectacular. Um, so we'll play around with the settings here. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug that into the input of here. Uh, so apply it at the attribute two, and then um, to volumes using the attribute value, we're going to grab the uh, explosion import file not, or node, pop that into here. So really in here, what we're after is uh, the temperature. So we're going to bit. Um, we're actually going to delete a bunch of points based on the temperature, so we don't get that blocky look. So um, I'm going to change the local, local variable to temp. Hope that doesn't confuse anybody. Um, and then that's going to be our temperature variable. So um, should be good. And then what I'll do is uh, we're going to need to delete stuff. And this is where I said uh, we're going to add delete node. Put that into there. OK, we're going to. Enter the delete node, and we're gonna have to switch right away. Switch it from primitives to points; otherwise, nothing will work. Um, and then what we want to do is we want to delete by expression. And the expression here, we're gonna put in is going to be dollar temp one. I believe is greater than five. Yeah. So, pretty much anything that is um, greater than Sorry, anything that's smaller than a temperature of five, what's going to happen is going to delete those nodes. So we don't have to deal with this box type of look. So uh, we're deleting a lot of stuff here because, um, I mean, I guess if you go back and you mess around and you bypass that node and you want to see what it looks like later, it's just a block of cubes. So to get to that point. So uh, the next thing we're going to want to do is bring in our geometry um, for our, um, sorry, it's going to be a file node. Uh, we're going to bring in our uh, geo. Uh, you can create a box right now if you don't have a file. Um, because what I did was I, I used Maya to create um, basically this, but more Lego-y. Uh, so what I'll do is I'm just going to delete the box. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to import um, this uh, OBJ file Lego piece that I created. Um, and you'll see it's very basic and very huge, just like that. So 
Um, what I'll do is I'm going to add a transform node because this is much too large. And I'm going to change the scale to 0.25. And then I'm going to plug that into there. And I'm going to visualize that. I believe that's right. Um, might be off by 10. We'll, we'll play um, with it a little bit later. So uh, what I'll do here is I'm just going to grab, uh, I'm going to, well, the next thing we want to do here is we're going to change this over to, um, I want to create a copy stop. So we're going to take the points here and I want to take this geo and we're going to apply it to each one of the points. So in order to do that is a copy stop. So we're going to plug that into the delete node and then we're going to plug this transform directly into this node and then we're going to be able to see what we're dealing with. Now, uh, I believe that's a little too big, so maybe I am wrong, and uh, we'll have to put zero in each one of these, just one. That looks a little better. Now, um, if we look, we're going to notice that the spacing is just way off, so that's where we're going to have to go back to the points from volume. We're going to have to play around with this point separation. Um, lucky for you guys, I don't want to screw around with it because I did it a little earlier and it's 0.26. And that should have them line up beautifully. And you can see underneath and everything. So um, so that's pretty much it. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a null object. I mean, we're not going to use it right now, but might as well do it. I'm going to plug that into there. Let's say, uh, I'll just say out just for this particular. Thing. So um, we'll visualize that. So now what we're looking at is our explosion. And if you sim that out, you're going to notice. It's actually not actually simulating because our simulation is off. So this is just, um, this is not really a simulation at all. But it does take time and it is pretty neat. Uh, at first it kind of looks really blocky, but uh, once it actually starts the... Uh, the explosion, the uh, mushroom cloud at about, I think it was 30, around frame 30 to 35. You're gonna notice it kind of thin out a little bit based on the temperature value. And you can go back in there. If you don't like what it looks like, you can mess around with the uh, temperature values and you can mess around with a whole bunch of other stuff and get what you want. And I would recommend going back to the basic simulation, the pyro explosion, um, playing around with it, getting something you really like, uh, modifying it, and then recaching that out and then just re-importing it into here and it'll just apply everything over there so um if you'd like i'll probably put in the uh basic geo if you guys aren't modelers i'll just throw in this basic cube um obj file so you guys can download it uh use it if you want um but in the meantime um just be just use a cube like a, a box sorry so that's it. Uh, and next step, what we're going to do is, or the next video, we're going to go ahead and we're just going to add some uh, color variation to that so it looks like an actual explosion. And it looks a little neater. And um, yeah, we should be on our way to working for Animal Logic very quickly. Thanks.